Good evening, everyone. My name is Jamie Womack Williams. I'm the State Education Issues Coordinator for Texas AFT. The Bridges Institute for Professional Br Development brings you the second of our five part series with Wellness Wednesday, Yoga and Chakras, Moving Energy Using the Breath. Our instructor tonight is Eleanor Harris. She is a current classroom teacher in Austin ISD. She has a master's degree in education and she's also a certified yoga instructor. So Eleanor, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and share my screen. So, all right, guys, thank you so much uh, for joining in for the Wellness Wednesday. I do quite a bit of body work and have taught yoga many, many years. So I'm going to review some of the things we started with last week um, before I start. And what I'd like to do is just have you uh, take a few moments to... I, what I'm going to do is focus my intention, what I would like to present for you all today. And, and when I do that, um, I'm gonna um, go, so, so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and um, focus my attention. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna stop the share for a moment. I'm going to go into the speaker view so I can see all of you. And what I'd like you to do is to bring, so I'm going to shift the view. I'm going to start by with namaste. So last week I brought my hands, the palms of my hands together into a prayer position. I'm going to let, and last week we talked about the heart. Bringing my hands, I'm going to sound OM three times. So it's as if I'm holding a piece of paper between the palms. I'm not trying to smash or, or flatten the paper, nor do I want it to fall out. But bringing the hands together, letting the thumbs rest on the heart center. I'm going to lower my head, close my eyes. I invite you to do so, but feel free to keep your eyes open if you'd like. And in this position, I'm going to set my intention, bringing my awareness to my breath. We worked with the Ujjayi one last week, which just is awareness of the breath. So you are breathing all the time. But now my intention is to be aware of my breath. And at any time, please go back to your normal breathing. And I'll talk more about the breath. After the exhale, I'm going to sound OM three times. Oh. Oh. If your hands have been up, you can allow them to come down into your lap. I'm going to slowly lift my head and slowly open my eyes. And last week I talked about the palms of the hands. Just notice if you've brought your hands with your palms up or your palms down. And both are okay. It's just there's a different positioning and the way the energy would work. And so you just, and so we focused our attention and I'm gonna go, and so we're gonna do a little bit of a body scan, uh, some reflection and some yoga poses. Um, so last week, and I'm not gonna take as long as I did last week, 
but um, we did a, a movement of rubbing the hands together. And I'm gonna stop the share again so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna review a few things that we did. So last week I started with by rubbing the palms together. This is building friction, it's building heat in, in the physical sense, but it's also increasing energy. As I increase the energy between the palms of my hands, I'm going to slightly separate them like I'm playing with taffy. And you may feel something, you may not. And if you don't, rub your hands together again, okay? Just to build that energy building, the heat in the hands. And again, see if you can start to feel like there's a pulse, okay? With that, you can also use your hands to scan the body. And I'm, I'm not touching, but I'm just going to notice if any parts of the body feel tight. And again, if you don't feel anything, this simply increases the circulation. You can practice this throughout the day. Sometimes it's nice to do this and just simply put your hands over your eyes. It's very calming, it's very relaxing. So I'm gonna go back to sharing the screen, but I'd like you to try that. Um, and I'm going to just, so we're collecting energy, okay? Um, after each ohm, when we do this, again, the hands up or palms down, there's a receptivity to the hands or, or, um, or you can either gather energy or you can send energy out. Um, so, and we worked with mudras also. So palms up is one way, palms down. Mudras are ways to channel the energy. And this is all things we talked about last week. There's a position where you bring your uh, index finger in contact with your thumb uh, on both hands, and that helps with uh, gaining knowledge. So this is one mudra which you can use at the end of class. I'll show you a couple more. Um, and today, like I said, we're just, I'm reviewing very quickly. Another mudra, Diana, you're going to take your left hand, it sits on the bottom, you place your right hand on top, and you allow the thumbs to touch. This one brings uh, inner peace and serenity. So anytime I have the hands together or the thumbs or fingers touching, I notice that contact. I don't want to like push the thumbs into each other, or if they do that, just notice that. But you're gently allowing the, the hands to touch it. You can practice these different mudras and see if one feels, um, what, if you resonate more with one than the other. Okay, so this one helps us to, for serenity and inner peace. Um, I went backwards. Okay, the other thing we practiced last week was something called Ujjayi One. Ujjayi One is simply awareness of your breath. So throughout the day, you are breathing, okay? I think we breathe something, I don't know if it's 80,000 times or 25,000 times a day. You're inhaling and exhaling. You are all breathing. Ujjayi One is just awareness of your breath. Awareness that you're inhaling, awareness that you're exhaling. Very simple. And so as we practice some of the poses, when you bring your focus, your intention to your breath, you are practicing Ujjayi One. Today, we're going to learn another breath called Ujjayi Two. But for this first part of the class, I'd like you to practice Ujjayi One. Last week, I started with the middle chakra, the heart chakra, where the hands were placed on the heart center. Today, I'm going to move to the first chakra, the root chakra. Um, it is the base, our support. It deals with our safety, our security. It's a grounding chakra. I'm going to stop the share once again so that I can show you where this chakra is located on your body. So I'm standing up. I'm going to just and, and I lower this. So this chakra is located here in the lower. So here's my belly button. Below the belly button in this whole uh, 
uh, like the pubic area, the groin area, you know, I don't know why that seems like I'm not supposed to say that word, but this would be the first chakra. It's our connection to the earth. The chakras are located on the spine and they move all the way up through the neck to the head and then we connect to our higher, okay? Higher, our intuition, whatever you feel is your higher, your God, your sense of something other than our physical right here and now. So today, we're gonna focus our energy on this root chakra, the first chakra. The color of this chakra is red, okay? It, it deals with our physical, our, our, our being in the world, um, and that is our first chakra, Muladhara, okay? The, the energy of this chakra is harder, it may not be harder to explain, but the Muladhara chakra, um, in the method that I had studied, the Iyengar system, I've studied other systems as well, they felt that you can't really teach this type of, of, of information until you master the physical body. However, a lot of you are meditators. This first chakra, it, it is our, it's located, the actual location of the chakra is between um, the anus and the, the, uh, the, the uh, urethra, I guess the opening. So it's like this point right underneath the, the center of our body. Um, so a balanced muladhara, it would help to ground you and it, it, it would, in the physical reality, in the physical world, it would deal with your food, your water, your security, your safety. When you feel balanced in this chakra, you tend to feel safe. Um, when it's unbalanced, when you, your muladhara may not be working as effectively, you may have anxiety, fear, nightmares. Physically, it can affect your colon, your bladder, your elimination your lower uh, back, your feet. So everything dealing uh, with the lower part of the body. That would relate to the muladhara. Um, last week, I also talked about, I'm gonna stop the share again so that I can show you another pose that we worked on last week. Um, and I'm gonna repeat these poses. I'm just reviewing very quickly but if you'd like to join me, you can. But last week I talked about Tadasana, mountain pose. In mountain pose, the feet are together. I feel that connection to the earth and then the energy rises up. I just wanted to show you because I didn't have it here in the poses, but I'm gonna stop. I hope this is, and, and let me know in the comments if this is moving too quick or not quick enough because I want to get to uh, actually doing the poses, but um, I also wanted to review some of this information with you. So I'm going to share once again, what am I doing here? Why is that not happening? Okay, sorry, let me go back here. Oh, I see, I didn't push the share button. And thank you for your patience with me. Uh, Presenting on an online format is very, very different. Last week, I talked about the, 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 the mountain pose, the pose I just did standing up, just standing. You want to be firm on your feet. And I'll review this, but I wanted to show you the bones of the feet because I talked about lifting up your toes. And you can practice this. I, I have bare feet. I'm gonna lift the toes and I'm gonna stretch them out. So if you lift up your toes and you're going to stretch them back down on the floor. Now, as you do this, why I have this, this uh, picture here is um, this area. So the, the big toe, you have your big toe here and then you have the uh, metatarsals and um, the phalanges, the, the distal, the bones in the toes, okay? As I lift up the foot and stretch out the toes, I want you to see, can you stretch 
this second and third toe away from each other. And your feet are in shoes all day long. And so sometimes the energy of the body becomes very constrained, it becomes tight. And so when you take your shoes off, you can feel that lift and the stretch of the feet that we are. And then as I bring the toes back down onto the earth, I want to feel that connection, the rootedness. So on the physical level, I'm talking about the feet, the connection to the earth. And then on the uh, metaphysical level, the muladhara is actually located in that um, lower portion of the pelvis, okay? So um, if you have questions, please put in questions and I can address them at the end. So, cause I wanted to get to the yoga portion. Um, the poses that we're going to work on today will be Tadasana, mountain pose. And we're also going to work on Janashir Shasan, head to knee pose. We're going to do Padmasan. Padmasan, this, this picture here, she's sitting in uh, half Padmasan, I think, with one foot down, both feet are, the, the feet are crossed. It's a very common yoga pose. And we'll also work on Malasan. Now, I'm going to analyze this pose for you because then uh, you will start to understand some things, I hope. Um, in this seated meditation, what I'd like you to notice is uh, I, am, I am so critical, but working with energy, it may not matter. It may matter. I'm just going to tell you what I know um, and, and that uh, you can then uh, work on this yourself, okay? So you'll notice the position of the fingers here, okay? That was one of the mudras. Here, the hips, the, it's seated on the ground, but notice how the knees are up higher than the hip, okay? If you, if you, when you are seated and this happens, I'm going to ask you to have a pillow or the blanket. Last week I said have some uh, blankets or a hard rug or something so that you will elevate, you will sit on something, a bolster or something. The other thing, and so that's, this is really important because if the muladhara right here, I need that grounding through the legs and, and I will show you what I'm talking about. So if you need to sit on a chair so that you, as we practice this pose, you can start to get this uh, stretch, the opening in through that area, okay? So uh, as a, okay, I'm just, so I'm gonna stop the chair. And uh, one more thing, the Ujjayi breathing is also known as the victorious breath. This breath will help to calm your nervous system as well as energize. Now, today we're going to work on Ujjayi 2 at the, at, towards the end of class, but Ujjayi 1, is just always awareness of the breath. So you will continue to bring your awareness to your breath, okay? So starting in Tadasan, I'm going to now start working on some yoga poses themselves, all right? So each class, what I'd like to do is do a little bit of introduction about what we are going to do, and then I'll do some of the yoga poses. So. Go ahead and stand up. I'd like you to stand up if you're going to join or you feel free to listen, but this is a standing pose. Tadasana, mountain pose. And so in Tadasana, as I said, I'm lifting up all the toes. I'm gonna to come in close. I used my hand last week, so if my foot were flat, I would lift up the toes and then stretch them back down onto the floor. Lift them up and stretch them back down onto the floor. Notice if you can, and you can look at your feet, see if you can get space in between each of the toes. So what you're doing here is this is like awareness. And you might say, hey, I can't move my toes. So we want to build the awareness in the body. So I'm going to lift and stretch them back out. Now, the other thing we practiced last week was shifting the weight forward so that you'll feel your toes start to grip a little bit. They will start to grip the floor. And you will also shift your body weight back onto your heels. 
I'd like you to do that a few times because bringing the awareness into our feet, into our foundation, is just helps with balance as we start to do some of the more difficult poses. Now into Dasan, as I shift forward, I feel my heels get light. As I take my body weight back to the heels, I feel like, oh, I'm gonna fall over. I wanna find what feels like center. So I wanna find where my feet are resting, not ripping the floor. I can press my heels down. Now, the other thing you might notice, it, oh, I'd like you to practice is I'm gonna shift my weight over to one side. So I'm shifting to one side and I get a little tippy. Leg might come up. Same thing, other side. I'm gonna shift my weight over to the other side. So that what I wanna do is I'm taking myself off balance to bring balance, okay? I don't wanna to be too far on one heel or the other, but I wanna come back to what is my center. Bringing my center, lifting up through the abdomen, lifting up through the belly button. I'm gonna come in close again. The Tan Den, and I'm gonna talk about the second chakra. So the second chakra, how embarrassing. So I'm gonna pull, the belly button is here, two inches below the belly button. <sighs> pull the Tan Den in. Last week, I also had you spread your fingers wide, place your hands on your hips, okay? So that if you had a seam on the pant leg down this side leg here, your middle finger would be along that seam. Your thumbs would be touching towards the front of the body, the little finger towards the back. Now, building awareness. So in Tadasana, not only am I aware of the weight on my feet, but I want to see is if I, it's an isometric, I'm going to squeeze the muscles of the leg. I'm going to squeeze, I'm going to lift through the front of the body. With your hands on your hips, See if you can feel your skin move. Do you feel the skin lift underneath the thumbs? Do you feel the skin lifting or moving under your middle finger? Do you feel the glutes, the back of the body, lift and tighten? So even though this is an isometric, we're working with the um, quads, you're working with the uh, IT band as well as the glutes, okay? And what I want you to notice, does one group of muscles work more than the other, okay? And again, if you find yourself, your jaws and your eyes tightening up, relax, okay? Take a breath, shake it out, and we're going to just repeat that much again. Lifting up the toes, stretching the toes back down onto the floor, bringing your awareness to the outer edges of your feet, pressing the heels down. And I can bring my hands here because that's the whole foot. The foot is activated. This, these, the, working the feet, you're activating those lower muscles of the leg. Last week I talked about the heart. So activating those muscles of the leg so good for your circulation. A lot of times if you have swelling in the feet or your ankles, this will help, this isometric. Then I'm gonna lift through the hips, see if I can feel, hmm. Sometimes that area under the thumb may be harder to feel, so I need to lift up through the tendon. Lift up, the tendon is that area below the belly button. From here, I'm gonna just bring my hands into namaste, bringing my hands into namaste. So this is mountain pose, your basic mountain pose. If, if your balance is hard, and once I'm in mountain pose, I again, notice the pressure between the two palms. Does it feel even? Is one hand more receptive? And you can bring your hands down, one knee rest at your side. Now here, I just want to gently draw the energy down towards the fingers. If your balance is difficult, you're going to take your feet, the feet are together, you'll turn your toes out, then turn the heels so your feet are parallel, okay? If you find it hard, I talked about last week, if you have little hips and your balance is fine, your, your feet are closer together, but if you find you can't stay stable, separate the feet, okay? So from this mountain pose position and 
allow your eyes to relax. Again, focusing your intention on the breath. Allow the feet to plant into the floor. Feel the center. Feel that you rise, that rising energy through the legs. You can place your hands here again, or you can notice, can you activate those muscles without your hands? Bringing your hands into namaste. Continue your awareness on your breath. Ujjayi one, your breathing. Last week from this position, we moved into tree pose. Okay, but before I did tree pose, so from here, what I'd like us to do is focusing the breath. I'm going to take a few deep breaths. So I'll just demonstrate one time. I'm just going to take the arms out to the sides, reaching the fingertips up towards the ceiling, and then exhaling. I'm going to return the hands to the heart center. Finding your mountain pose. So if you need to separate the feet so that you can maintain your balance, feel free to do that. Lowering the hands. Inhale. Taking the arms up. You can take your eyes up and your head up as well. Exhale. Bringing the hands into the heart. Releasing the hands down. Inhalation. Lifting up. Exhale. Two more times. Inhale, lifting it from the heart, lifting up, maintaining the tandem, pulling back, keeping your legs strong. One last time, inhale, lifting the arms up, eyes up, exhale, bringing the hands towards the heart center. Now, I consciously, my intention is to shift the weight over towards my left foot. So I want to feel more weight on that left foot so that I can start to bring, I'm going to just lower this screen a bit so you can see my feet. I'm hoping you can see my feet. All right, my lower leg. Good. So from here, what I'm going to do is I've shifted the weight slightly, tree pose. So if you have a hard time balancing, you're going to just allow the toes to rest on the ankle. And last week, and you're going to allow that energy of the tree to just lift, lift up, okay? If you have a hard time balancing, find a wall, lean up against the wall so that you can lift without worrying about, oh, I'm gonna fall over. So your tree might need a stake, and for your stake to support your tree, Use the wall, okay? So if you find you were tippy, go over towards the wall. And we're going to repeat, just practice the second side. We'll do both sides again. I'm going to shift the weight towards the right foot. I'm going to bring the left foot up, allowing it to see if I can start to lift, allowing the leg to come up. Now here, in Namaste, I have my hands touching. I don't want to push myself over. So I want to feel that leg, not the straight leg, nice and strong. The other leg joins and meets it. Coming into Namaste. Oh, I'm sorry, coming into tree pose, lowering the hands and the feet. Same thing, both sides. So as I do this, I'm going to shift my weight towards the left. Bring up the right foot, tree pose, and tadasan. So that tree is growing on the mountain. I want to feel the stability through the base of my foot. I'm drawing the energy of the abdomen back, bringing the leg up. You can bring your, you can grab hold of the foot. So once your foot is here, you want that pressure, not that I'm pushing myself over, but that there is a meeting of the leg and the thigh but they're coming in and they meet without holding, or don't hold your breath, continue breathing. And lowering your leg back down, second side. Shifting the weight over to the right, lifting up through the left foot. It's fine to keep your toes resting on the floor or using a wall for support allowing the leg to lift. 
and you'll see how high up you can bring your leg onto your thigh. If you need to, you can always support your leg by holding onto your foot here. So I can work on my balance, but if you can, you release, bringing your hands into Namaste. Maintaining the breath. Now, if a wind starts to blow and you feel like, oh, I'm going over, it's okay, you just repeat. Because part of this is as you work with your breath, this is what happened. Life presents things to us where we are, we are challenged in what we are doing. Okay, so what I'd like to do is, I believe I asked you last week. Now, I'm going to show you a few different things. Some of you may have a yoga belt. Some of you, if you don't have a yoga belt, if you have like a belt to a robe or something, that would be useful. So I'd like you to grab either your yoga belt or grab a belt, and you may not need these things, but um, what we're gonna do, the other thing, uh, some of you might have one of these stretchy bands. Um, we're gonna work on some poses to help open up the hips, open up that mulagara. Now, this is my second Zoom class. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. Uh, and you all will give me some feedback about this. So I am changing the position of my computer, lowering it, because I would like to sit on the floor, okay? And in sitting on the floor, I grabbed a couple of blankets and I might need to actually bring my computer down onto the floor. Okay, guys, you'll have to let me know if this is working or not in the comments afterwards. All right. These are things I have not done before. All righty. So, and I'm not sure. So I'm down on the floor and sitting in simple cross legs. Have your belt or a strap or something close by. And if you don't have that, don't worry about it. You can do this and I'll show you how to do that without uh, a prop, okay? So what I'd like you to do is I'm gonna have you start with your left leg. I'm gonna take my left hand and lift my foot. Lift my foot up. And here I can just lift the foot up and down like this, yeah? I'm gonna take my right hand and rotate, so let me see. And in, in India, if I, and I, I'm going to ask you for your apology first. I should not be showing you the bottom of my foot because that would be insulting, okay? So I don't mean to do that, it's just this is the format. I'm gonna show you the bottom of my foot. I apologize in advance, okay? Because the feet touch the ground and that is not um, a good thing to show people. But uh, in order to, this is, I'm seeing the bottom of my foot here. So I'm gonna take my other hand, the ball of the metatarsal, the ball of the big joint. I'm gonna rotate. So this hand supports my ankle. This hand, I'm trying to turn, turn, turn. So I don't want to show you the bottom of my foot. I'm trying to rotate to look at the bottom of my foot myself, okay? I want to see my own sole of my own foot. Now, here my foot is towards that side of my body. I want to bring it towards the midline, towards my head. I'm also going to lift so that my foot is in line with my head Supporting my ankle, exhale, draw your foot in towards your head. All right. Now you will feel this all in through the hips here. Okay. And then what you'll do is you'll straighten the leg out. Turn to my side. Straighten the leg out. It's important when I do this pose that the back of the knee 
I don't want to keep my leg like that. If your leg is like that with the knee bent, here's where you need a belt or a strap. So that firmness of the muscle, like in Tadasan, I want to tighten these leg muscles, okay? With the belt, it's not like I'm leaning back like this, but I want to sit up, stretch through the back of the leg, stretch through the back of the leg. If you don't have a belt, hard to, your knee is bent, then hold either here under your thigh, stretch the back of your knee out, and lower the leg. Same leg, same side. What I'd like you to tell me in your comments is it, if it's easier if I sit to the side. I, I don't want to insult anybody by showing you the bottom of my foot. So I got to figure this out. Okay, but I'm going to anyways because I can't. So I lift the foot, supporting under my ankle. So my hand comes under, comes between this crease in my leg. I support my ankle. I rotate the sole of the foot, so I'm trying to see the bottom of my foot. I'm gonna pull the foot in. But this time, instead of pulling it towards my head, I'm pulling it towards my heart center. I wanna see if the bottom of the foot can touch the heart center. And I draw the leg in. And I'm breathing. Breathing into any tightness. After a couple breaths, once again, releasing the leg. Make sure the back of your knee is stretched, holding the leg, or using a belt. You can't stretch the back of the leg. Yeah, that's it. So I see somebody is, yeah, you grab the belt. So you're stretching through the back of the leg. And we're going to repeat one more time, okay? Same side, same leg, hand under the ankle, rotate the bottom of the foot, draw the leg in, but this time the foot is moving towards that second chakra. So I'm gonna see, can I bring my heel in towards the belly? And as well as to the midline of the body. So my foot's not way over here. I'm slowly opening up the hip, slowly pulling it in towards the midline of the body. And after a couple breaths, once again, stretching the back of the leg out, stretching through the back of the leg. Grab the belt, grab a strap, make sure the back of your knee is stretched. Last time, rotate the foot. Now, here, if you have, if, and if some of you, your knees may bother you, you might just bring your foot back down onto the ground, okay? You might have your foot further away from your body because this can be hard on your joints if you're not used to this. This can be very hard on your joints. If it is hard on your joints, make sure you can just keep both legs straight and just bend the knee a little bit, okay? Because you don't have to lift it up towards your head but you might just do a little movement like that. But this last time on this side, I rotate. Here, let me see if you all can see that. I'm bringing my foot onto my thigh, okay? Now your foot might wanna slide down like that, but I'm trying to bring my foot as high onto my thigh, as close to the, uh, as close to the crease of the body as possible. Because in, in a yogic position, ideally, if I flex my heel like this, it would massage my intestinal organ. So that's a, a second plus to this uh, pose, okay? If this hurts your knee at all, please sit up higher or just have, just practice bending your knee and I'll show you a pose from a chair. So from here, bringing your foot up. I'm gonna take my fingers back. I'm gonna bring the other foot in so that this is half lotus, half padmasin. Um, half padmasin. So from here, now I had said earlier that that picture, I'm gonna to turn to my side. And you can sit in padmasin. If your knees bother you, let me know and I'll uh, provide an alternative. 
So if I sit to my side, what I would like you to notice are that here, my knees are lower than my hip. Whereas in that picture I showed you at the beginning, I said, oh, the knees were up higher. I'd like your knees to be lower. If your knees are up high, practice put more uh, support under your hips, okay? Just so you know. So, so this is Padmasin Half Lotus. If this is hard, it's fine to keep the foot on the ground. You don't have to bring it up onto the thigh. We're gonna do the same thing to the second side, okay? So, um, and here is where if you were in class, I would be able to see what you're doing to provide some modifications. And in this format, you're gonna need to let me know, okay? Um, so second side. I'm gonna take my right hand, I bent my right leg, I'm gonna place it underneath my leg. I'm lifting, sorry, lifting my foot up. And here we just let the leg come up and down a few times, right? I take my other hand, I use my thumb to push into the big toe joint so that I can start to look at the bottom of my own foot. I'm gonna look into my own sole here. Now here, I said, so your foot might be way over here. So there's two different movements occur. One is I'm taking my foot towards the midline of the body. The second, I'm lifting up towards the head. The third is I'm pulling my whole foot. So ideally, that foot could slap the top of my forehead. Yeah, it's supposed to make you conscious. You can do that. Have, have the bottom of your foot hit your own forehead to help bring your awareness. So here I use the breath. On the exhale, I deepen into the pose. Inhale, I breathe into any tightness. Exhale, deepen into the pose. One more breath. And release, stretching out the back of the leg. So when you stretch out the back of the leg, if you can hold on to your foot, you can hold on to your thigh, you can grab a belt. And if I use the belt, the other part is I can also lift my heart, okay? So I'm not just struggling with trying to keep my leg up, but that you can also lift the heart center. Release, same thing. Hand goes under the leg, support your ankle, rotate the bottom of your foot. You're going to draw the leg in. All right, pull it towards the heart center. So this time it's not, so you're taking the knee to the side, foot towards the heart center. And breathing. Ujjayi breath, you're inhaling, you're exhaling, and you're aware that you're breathing. Ujjayi one. Release, stretch the back of the leg out. Remember to keep your knee extended, supporting your leg, supporting here, as long as your knee is straight, okay? Same thing, hand under the uh, leg to support your ankle, other hand comes around, rotate the bottom of the foot, draw the foot in towards your belly button. So it's again, you're trying to bring the bottom of the foot towards the midline of the body. Use your breath. Inhale into any area that feels tight. Exhale, pull the leg in closer. Inhale. Exhale, draw the leg in closer. And stretching through the back of the leg one more time. Go ahead and last time, foot comes, so I'm supporting, rotating the bottom of the foot. See if you can bring it onto the thigh, all right? This is my tight side, my right side. Uh, if, I'll sit to the side so you can see the difference. Um, on this side, my leg, my knee, it's much harder You'll see that my 
knee is up higher than my hip on this side. It's just an old injury. So my knee is up higher. So some of the adjustments that I might do, what you don't want to, you're not supposed to say what you're not supposed to do, but I'm going to tell you, do not push your knee. <laughs> you can injure your knee. Do not push your knee. What I might do, though, is lean my body forward, okay? That, and then I feel the tightness is here in my hip. So without pushing my knee down, I'm going to bring the body forward so that I can start to loosen, because really, it's not the knee that needs to loosen. It's the hips. It's in that muladhara, that, that first chakra area where the femur sits in the leg, okay? And then release. So this is working towards half, uh, half lotus, all right? I would like to repeat both sides. I'm going to kind of skip around here, not skip around, but what I'd like you to do I'm going to just, because for some of you, if that was very difficult on your knees, I'm going to do this lying down so that instead of providing a modification, I'm going to just show you a different pose. This one isn't as effective on the Muladhara, but you can lie down, you can bend your knee, hold on to the back of the leg, so that in this position, it's not as, as much of a strain on the knee as the previous pose. So that this you can probably do safely without any injury to your, to, uh, yeah. So that lying down and you'll just bend the knee and deepen into the pose like that, okay? The full pose, you would extend the leg out. So I'm gonna repeat the same pose, half lotus, but if you had difficulty with that, please lie down on the floor so that your knees are bent and um, you're not going to strain your knees, okay? But if that is, if you were okay doing this, we're going to repeat both sides again. Hand goes under, so starting with the left foot, okay? Otherwise, you will lie down on the floor and you will pull your thigh in toward your body. Rotate the bottom of your foot, bring it in towards your head. Take a breath, exhale, release, stretching out the back of your knee. Holding onto your thigh, but make sure your knee straightens. Same thing, open up the hip, rotate your foot, Draw it in towards your heart center. And breathe, inhale and exhale. And again, stretching out the back of the knee. Third time, bending the leg, supporting under your ankle. Rotate the sole of your foot, pulling it in towards the belly button. And release, stretch out the back of your leg, bending the knee, this time we're going to put the foot onto the thigh, okay, foot onto the thigh, I'm going to lower the angle of this so that you can see, I'm going to, now here I said you can bring your body weight forward, you'll notice when I bring my body weight forward, my knee is able to come down onto the ground, do not do this if your knee does not come onto the ground because you will hurt your knee, okay? You can hurt your knee, but I'm going to bring the other foot on top so that I'm sitting in Padmasan, lotus pose, okay? So this is how to do lotus pose safely. You can release the leg and we'll do the same thing and I want to stretch the back of the knee out. Now we'll go back to the second side. So if you're lying on your back, you're going to change to your second side as well. So you'll be drawing your leg in toward your chest. You'll be stretching out the leg as you're lying on your back. Take your right hand, support your ankle. Rotate the sole of the foot. Lift the foot so you're bringing it in towards your head. Use your breath, exhale to deepen into the pose. Inhale, 
Focus your breath into an area that feels tight. Stretch your leg out. Hand goes under the foot. You can open your uh, hip, open the femur, rotate the sole of your foot, bring it in towards your heart center. Use your breath. Deepen into the pose as you stretch the leg. Oh my gosh. Stretch the back of the leg out one more time. Third time, bringing the foot in towards the midline. And stretch the back of the leg out. Then bringing the foot on to your other leg. Now, I, I showed you earlier, this knee does not touch the ground. I am not going into full lotus. I'm not gonna show you full lotus on this side because I could injure my knee. So if your knee comes down to the ground easily, while you keep your bottom on the ground, then go in. Because I can bring my knee to the ground, but I've lifted my whole pelvis. So I'm, in a, I'm not going into full lotus, but this will help me get into full lotus. Go ahead and release the leg, stretching both of your legs out, okay? Um, what I would like to do, that's Padmasin. And one other pose, oh my gosh, we didn't even get to Ujjayi one. So I'm gonna have you lie down on the floor. I will do Malasana next week because I want to give Jamie some time for you guys to win your prizes and all. Um, find a spot where you can lie down on the floor or you're going to put your back against a wall so you're supported. And the reason I'm asking you to do this is I'm just going to talk you through Ujjayi 2. Ujjayi 2 is a breath where you're going to lengthen your exhale. So once you're in a position, I'm going to continue talking and I'm going to talk you through Ujjayi 2. So as you're ready, you'll get your body into a comfortable sit position, bringing your awareness to your breath. Soft inhale, slow, soft exhale. You're going to count how long does it take you to inhale so if you were inhaling, it would be inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Anytime, go back to normal breathing. Exhale. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Back to normal breathing. Anytime you feel like you can com continue the pattern, feel free to do so. What you are doing is you are increasing the length of your exhalation. The inhale is slightly shorter. I'm going to begin one more round. As you're ready, exhale the breath to begin. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, five. Back to normal breathing or continuing the pattern. And one more round, we'll just do this two times and you'll go back to normal breathing before you sit up. Conscious exhale. Inhale, two, three, four. 
Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six. On your own. Exhale completely, going back to normal breathing, allowing your eyes to stay soft. And as you're ready, you'll slowly open up your eyes and you'll come back into a seated position and Jamie I'm going to let you give away the prizes I'll stop yeah. the show. Thank you so much Eleanor you are If you're not a member of your local union please visit www.texasaft.org for more information about how you can join your local affiliates. Um, this is what is bringing you these Wellness Wednesday sessions. Um, it's your, your member dues at work, and we hope that you invite more people for our session next week. I know last week somebody asked about uh, sciatic. And um, I will do something for sciatic. I'll talk less and do less lecture, if that's okay for you all, uh, so that we have more time for poses. So this is Sylvia, can you hear me? Yes. Um, okay, since I can't get on the floor because I can't get up and down right now, if, if I do um, those positions that you showed on the floor, can I do those on the bed for a while? And is there any benefit to that? Yes, you can. Uh, a bed is a little softer than the floor, mm -hmm. but, and that was one of the questions in my questionnaire. Uh, the hard part about teaching about the chakras or the poses that might be. So practice the one where I said you lie down and you pull your knees into the chest. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So, uh, and next week I can do more of that. I wanted to work with the chakra, but that may not be, that is not a beginner pose. Padmasan, half a lotus is not a beginner pose. But I can right. show you something that would be more suitable for beginners. Thank okay, for thanks. Time. Yeah. Thanks. And Eleanor, um, Eleanor, in the box, Patricia asked, is there reason why a side of our body has more balance than the other? Um, usually we lead more with one side than the other. It's just like my right side. I said you saw I couldn't do lotus on that side. It's, a, it's an injury. If I'm, and, and that's usually, I, I worked with a, a student yesterday, a, a young kid was a skateboarder. One half of his body was just tight. The other half was like, oh, this is like almost, but it's what we do. If you're right-handed, we tend to do things more or even standing. So when we're in mountain pose, 
Notice if during the day you put more weight on that one foot than the other. Uh, and you'll begin to see if you, we tend to favor one side. Do we need to stretch before pulling in our legs and into the pose? Um, what we are doing, we are stretching. Okay, that what those those knee bending and the leg straightening out, you are stretching the hip muscles. So it's a very focused area of working. Um, the I mean, shock, the, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I, I mean the like the leg muscles because I'm noticing that it's tightening up and you maybe can't stretch all the way. Stretch it. What I will do then next week, um, if there's difficulty with getting up and down off the floor, is I can do more stretches where we are working on that and I won't focus so much on the chakra, trying to open up those energies, but do more of a beginner, just getting the legs stronger. Okay, it's more of the, um, maybe pulling the leg uh, in or up and down. Uh -huh. Just lifting the foot up and down, you are stretching the leg muscles. That first okay. pose that I showed you, Tadasan, just standing up and learning how to activate the leg muscles also helps to build strength. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. This ends our Wellness Wednesday session, and we will see you next Wednesday at 6 o'clock for our third installment. Thank you very much and have a great weekend. Thank you.